Tasmina Ahmed Sheikh. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. There are some towns in Syria which have not received food aid since 2012, and we have an absolute moral responsibility to protect civilians who are suffering from the wider effects of, of a conflict in which the UK is now an active participant. No expense, of course, has been spared in dropping uh, high-tech missiles, UK high-tech missiles, on the country, but it is indeed, of course, bread, not bombs, that the people in Syria need at this moment, and it's incumbent on us to do all that we can to make that happen. So, can I ask the Minister why eight days have passed since the UN deadline with no tangible action? Can I also ask the Minister, is it really the case that we are asking for permission from Assad to feed the very people he himself have starved. And the Minister, of course, uh, will be aware that malnourished and sick children need specialist care, which cannot be provided by airdrops. So, can I ask what action the Government is taking to re-establish road access to these very desperate people? It is the United Nations that is talking to the Assad regime uh, about uh, getting access. It is the United Nations that uh, has the good offices to, to make those approaches, and the United Nations, which is in charge of delivering the humanitarian assistance. That is the way forward that we judge at the moment is most likely to lead to access a successful outcome, and one that is safe, both for those receiving the aid and for those delivering it. Now, there are some parts of Syria where high-level airdrops, if we could not get overland access, might be of help, but high-level airdrops of humanitarian assistance are not a precise way of, of giving help. There are other parts of Syria where the nature of the conflict or the, the, the close, the, the densely populated urban character of the, the communities we're, we're trying to help mean that you would have to bring in helicopters uh, and not rely on high-level airdrops at all. And that again emphasises the complexity of this task and why, for all its imperfections, the best outcome would be if the UN can uh, secure access agreed by the regime for either overland or failing that for airborne assistance.